Yeah, dude, I know I've called you five times, but I need you to hurry up over here. Liam's here. We need to hurry up and film, get this thing out of here. Come on, just make sure to bring your notes. Please hurry. Yeah, man, I was just at a friend's house studying. Uh, I have my notes for the review. I just have to head on over. I'll be over there in just a second. All right, see ya. Oh, come on. No! Oh man, Marquez is gonna kill me. Oh God. Hey, sweet, can you hand me those notes down there? Hi, uh, Zachary. What nice notes. Do you want it back? Dude, why else would I be kneeling in front of a sewer drain? Plus, I just asked you. you. Look like a nice boy. I bet you have a lot of friends. Uh. That's a little creepy, but yeah, uh, I guess I do. And I make movie reviews with my cousin. Where is he? He's back at the house annoying the crap out of me about hurrying back so we can film my review, so can you hurry up with those notes? I bet I could cheer him up. I'll give him a balloon. Do you want a balloon too, Zachary? Why would I want a balloon from a strange clown I've never met before in a sewer drain? Oh, uh, well I'm Pennywise the dancing clown. Pennywise? Yes, meet Zachary. Zachary, meet Pennywise. Now we aren't strangers, are we? I mean, we're still strangers, but whatever. Whatever gets me my notes the fastest. Dude, fine, whatever. I'll just remember my notes on my own. What? Oh, without your notes? Well, it's about time. You don't want to lose it, Zachary. Marquez is gonna kill you. Okay, man, I'm here. It's about time, dude. Oh my god! Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for coming over here to Two Awesome Men. We're very happy to say we have a guest today. We're going to bring him up right here, and that's our friend Liam. And I'm going to try to get out of this, and it's a very small area. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we had him on here about, what was it, like a week ago? A week, two weeks ago? Yeah, mm -hmm. talking about ready or not. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't here for that video, so I'm happy to be over here while he's over here. Yeah. But today we went ahead and saw the movie, uh, the highly anticipated movie, uh, mm -hmm. It Chapter 2. Um, oh my goodness, let's see here. Let's read off. Jessica Chastain, James McAvoy, Bill Hader, Isaiah Mustafa, Jay, Jay Ryan. James Ransone, Andy Bean, and Bill Skarsgård, and all the other kids from the original. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also it's directed by Andy Muschietti. Yeah, this was definitely one of my most anticipated movies, other than Endgame, obviously. Yeah. This was my most anticipated movie of the year. Uh, I, I can't really say that it really disappointed me that much, mm. but it wasn't nearly as great as a hoping it would be. Yeah, I was actually pretty disappointed by it because I, I loved the first one as well. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was like a perfect combination of like a coming of age story and like mm -hmm. a horror movie. Um, and this one, I just, it, I, I kind of went in knowing that people didn't like the second half of the book as much as the first half. Oh, yeah. So I was kind of prepared for like, you know, it's going to be pretty different. But I just thought the directing wasn't quite as good. The acting was great. All the the, the all the actors that played the adult losers I thought were fantastic, especially yeah. Bill Hader. Yeah, oh, Bill they, Hader. Yeah, he was like one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. The the acting was by far one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah, and especially the casting. Just the oh, casting yeah. alone was ridiculous. Yeah, Dude, it's insane. <laughs> they they found him. They just looked so almost exactly like them, pretty yeah. much. Like like how you would imagine. Right. And some of the more surprising ones was like the guy who played Ben. Yeah, yeah. You know, like <laughs> like. I, at first, I was it, it was hard to like fully put my mind into it because it was like it's hard to do that transition from being really overweight to like a fit guy. Right. Then you're looking like he looks a lot like the kid. Exactly. Yeah. It's mostly like, like in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like crazy. But like a lot like the kid. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the best things about this movie. The guy who played adult uh, 
Eddie. Looked like exactly how we would imagine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this movie, honestly, I, I love the writing in it. Uh, I felt like the story was really well done. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of different reveals you find out, and there's a character. There's some characters you find out reveals about, and it really brings it together for a really well done movie. Uh, there's also, I would say, the emotional aspects were pretty well done. Yeah. But I would say that's more in the lines because of the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like they definitely relied a lot on just like your knowledge of the first one. So like, I feel like they could have done more to develop the. Uh, adult characters yeah. more because you know you like the characters but that's just because you know the first right. movie was so good and then the actors were all really charming and they have like a great on-screen chemistry like the scene when they're in the restaurant together like they were all like just laughing and making jokes that felt like an adult version of the Losers Club yeah. but they did yeah oh I was gonna say uh, especially since this is 27 years after the first one yeah. there's so much that's happened in their lives they should be. They should feel like not necessarily like extremely different people, but they should feel yeah. like some things have happened to them in their life mm -hmm. throughout that twenty-seven years. And I feel like that was one of my biggest issues from the very start is that that I know they wanted to get right into the story, yeah. But like they didn't really develop the adult characters as, as much as I feel like they should have, because yeah. it, it went it gets straight into them going back to Derry, yeah, without them showing much about what their life was. And some of them start with. Mike already having called them, right? right. Like uh, Richie already starts off with uh, Mike already having called them, so that you don't really see too much of what he's like now. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about another three-hour horror movie I watched recently. I saw the extended cut of Midsummer. Oh yeah. And you know that movie, it takes so much time to like set up the characters and their the relationships. And obviously, I wasn't expecting it to take that long to, for them to like get to Derry and everything. But I feel like it was just like you only got like one scene of each character and like. Some of the characters, even like uh, Richie, you you know, you only see him like he screws up like his comedy act, but that's really all you really know about him mm -hmm. before yeah. he gets reintroduced. You, yeah, you pretty much only know their professions. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. kind of like if things in their lives have stuck with them. Oh yeah, a yeah. little bit because right. most of the people, their things in their past has stuck with them as kids. You know, mm -hmm. but um, I feel like also this movie, it was they had a lot of scenes that were flashbacks. Yeah. And I felt like some of them were not bad. I, f I didn't have a problem with all the flashbacks. Some of the flashbacks I felt like were kind of necessary. But there was a f quite a bit of the flashbacks I felt like were really unnecessary. Yeah, and I, I do agree with that. And also a another negative for the flashbacks is they had to de-age the kids, the kid actors. Because mm -hmm. obviously, I mean, I don't know why they didn't film them back to back, the, mo the two movies. Yeah. But they, the kids obviously grew up. A little bit so and it had to be in the same time period as the first movie mm -hmm. so they had to look the same as in the first movie so they did the aging but on some on a lot of them it just looked really weird it looked yeah. off especially with ben and eddie ben yeah. especially whenever they showed ben because you could tell like his body frame and like his height and everything was different but they kept his face like looking like a kid kind of but didn't necessarily look out like how he, how he looked in the first movie yeah so it looked kind of weird and then his voice was high pitched Oh yeah. So just like it took me out of the movie a lot whenever they did the flashbacks. I'll, I'll, I'll say only the one that took me in the flashback the most was the very first one. Because that very first one, it was like it was bad for everyone. Yeah. Like really bad for all of them. And then later on, the ones that stayed bad was Ben. Eddie got a little better, and so his was like okay. But like the re but the rest of them were okay. But that very first scene was like real. The very first scene they showed all of them. They're like underground. Yeah. That scene really like took me out of it completely because yeah. it was so yeah. bad. And, and which sucks because I mean I, I do feel like they did over rely on the flashbacks, but some of the flashbacks I think could have been my favorite parts of the movie if the de aging didn't really take me didn't take me out of the movie as much as it did. Yeah. Because like they kind of delved more into their fears, like how Ben. Uh, they brought up his weight more in this movie than they did in the first movie, I felt like. I kind of wish the only flashbacks that they had had were just the ones where they're looking for the artifacts. Oh, yeah. And, because, like, all those ones, like, even though some of the CGI was bad, mm -hmm. the it made sense because it's like right. we're learning something new about the characters. Yeah. Or, I guess in some of the characters, we're just, like, seeing a new location or a new scene. Um, but, like... Uh, like like you said, the just the the voice changes, especially yeah. for Richie, because it's so you know obviously watching Stranger Things, you can see how Finn Wolfhard's like voices change, mm -hmm. but like and his they like almost made him like over the top like squeaky, like it was okay. it was it was, was kind of distracting. One thing I'll also say is I felt like some of the flashbacks I couldn't figure out where they fit. 
Yeah. You know, like, I felt like the first movie was so put together, it almost felt like it was day to day. Yeah. You know, the, the, the first one, you know? Yeah. And so this new one shows flashbacks and so informa- shows information we never knew, mm-hmm. you know, that happened during the first one. Yeah. And I could not figure out where they fit. Right. Because right. some of them would happen in, and the only place they could happen was this, like in the, in the area that just wouldn't make sense for it to fit at. It was just really strange. Right. Yeah, like the stuff with Ben at summer school, like I couldn't figure out, was that like, I was at first I was thinking, it's like, oh, is that after the first movie? But then but it's it, like, it, wait, can't, it can't be after the yeah, first movie. Yeah, <laughs> and then like, wait, no, it isn't. But like, like you said, like the first movie shows it like so, like yeah. you said, almost day to day. Like yeah. you feel like you watch like their entire summer. Yeah. And it's like, oh, there's just some new stuff that you yeah. didn't see. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I guess I guess it does fit somewhere else. I just couldn't. It yeah. did feel. I couldn't figure out where it would have fit. One thing that's really funny to me, and I don't know if any of y'all noticed it, this the the two longest movies of the year are really similar movies. In Game and It Chapter Two. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not, but it's a, they're decently similar. Oh, movies. kind of how they have to like collect different yeah. artifacts in order to in order to beat the main yeah. villain of right. it. You know, this really powerful villain. And yeah. it's, it's it would. It wasn't like a completely yeah. like there, but right, like, yeah. it, it was like good enough for me. And I was like, "This is kind of like like in game, or I guess Hellboy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> they're both they're both like kind of dealing with like their past selves, and, yeah. like kind of the idea of just like living up to your own legacy and things like that. Although I haven't read the book, guys, so I just want to let y'all. I I haven't read the book, but I've looked a lot into the book. Mm-hmm. So like, if there's anything I've missed or anything that was in the book, you know, I I didn't notice or something like that. Yeah, I haven't yeah, read it. I'm either. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I mean, about that. I haven't, I haven't read the book either, and I know that, like I said, that the second half of the book is pretty unpopular, which I keep kind of referencing indirectly through uh, the James McAvoy's character is now like a screenwriter, and they're talking about how all, of, all of his endings suck, yeah, and how he's uh, like trying to change that. So that was definitely like a very meta commentary, and it was like interesting because I thought the ending was like the best part of the movie. Yeah, they they had a weird scene. Uh, just speaking of that. Uh, and it, there, it was like in a in an um, antique store. Yeah. Oh. And I was okay with the Stephen King references and stuff before yeah. this, uh-huh. but then I just felt like the the just and it was kind of a little on the nose with the antique store yeah. scene. And I really didn't feel like it didn't necessarily have to be there, you know. Yeah. But you know. And uh, just talking about the book, uh, something that was in the book that I felt like, well, the, the Henry character, uh, he, he's in this movie, yeah. the old version. Which I, I didn't necessarily mind him being in there. I just wish they would have done more with them since he was in this movie. Because uh, he, he he felt like he was only there just to like randomly pop up and scream yeah. at the main characters and run at them with a knife. Yeah. I felt like goofy. all that he was there for. Yeah. Which I, I, don't, I didn't necessarily mind him because it did create some tension in some scenes. But I feel like they could have done more with him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think actually in the series, they actually do a little bit more with him. Uh-huh. Uh, not, not a lot more, but just a little something he does that kind of breaks him down a little bit. Yeah, I, um, thought, yeah. I thought he was a little bit, he was a little bit too over the top. I thought, cause yeah. like in the first movie, he's like genuinely like, he feels like a real bully. He's like yeah. really scary. Like an actual like psychopath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he just came off like a little bit, like he found like, felt more like a movie villain as opposed mm-hmm. to like yeah. an actual psycho. Yeah. yeah, just, th- yeah. Th- this movie did have more of a cheesiness factor than yeah. the first one, did, which I, I didn't necessarily mind completely. But there were times where it did like it was a little bit too much. I, I feel like they used a little bit too much comedy in this one, which yeah. the first one I didn't mind the comedy like at all because it, it felt natural. But this yeah. this one, there were moments where I feel like they could have dialed back the comedy yeah. just a little bit. Th- this movie kind of reminded me, yeah, like like just the cheesiness value of like the first two Insidious movies, which are like extremely cheesy. Okay. But at their core, they're a good movie, and so they're good to watch. This movie, I felt like the cheese didn't really bother me except for one scene. With Eddie, there was one scene with Eddie that mm-hmm. was really over the top cheesy. And one thing I will say that I loved about this movie was they didn't shy away. And, and like one of my biggest issues with the first one is they shied away so much from the gore and from the terror of yeah. the situations. Yeah, this one full on showed you stuff. Right, like yeah. it didn't really back off of it, and that's one thing I really enjoyed about this movie. You know, they and, and I guess that kind of is a warning too. If you like the first one and you liked it and you're fine with it, you know, kind of be careful. This yeah. one's a lot gorier than the first one. It shows a lot more deaths than the first one, mm-hmm. you know. So I just, that, yeah. that is kind of a warning there. Because the first one didn't really show the deaths in detail. They would either cut away or they would be more implied. But this one, they definitely show you it all. It, it was a movie that I've had a lot of issues with it. I wasn't necessarily disappointed, but overall, I really did like it a lot. Uh, I don't think it was near the first one. 
you know, the first one is just so great. And the first one's great for a lot of reasons that the second one, no matter what, could not pull off. Yeah. Right. You know, no matter what, no matter how perfect this movie was, it could not be as good as the first one, mm -hmm. yeah. if that makes sense. So, yeah. I mean, I could take off some stuff from it, but at the same time, it's like, it's not going to get there. Because number one, the first one was kids. It's a lot scarier. You know, you feel a lot more tension there. Yeah. You, know? mm -hmm. you see them as these kids who are dealing with that. And so this one's adult, so, I mean, it can never get to that level. It's also, it I think, Carter's, because, like, the first one was very much about, like, the idea of like growing up and like how the different all their different like fears would manifest themselves in the form of Pennywise. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this one, it's like they're more just just trying to have to deal with that as an adult. But it's also like we've seen a lot of it before, yeah. So it just wasn't as scary the second time. Also, I don't know if you guys thought this, but I feel like Pennywise wasn't in it that much. He wasn't. Yeah, he um, wasn't. Kind of like Endgame. That's <laughs> <laughs> right? no, the same movie. <laughs> uh, I feel like if it's gonna the movie's gonna be this long, they could have. Uh, included more of just more of Pennywise, either his backstory or more about him, because we didn't really learn that much more about him, um, mm -hmm. other than the sort of the stuff that Mike explains. Yeah, um, which I thought they explained that they they had a scene for the first one that they were going to use the second one talking about Pennywise's past and why he chose to be like a clown and all that, but I guess they decided it wouldn't fit in the yeah. movies. I don't know. It just because like there was sort of a part in the middle of the movie when they're all looking for the artifacts where they're all separated and. I, I just didn't feel like there was as much like urgency because uh, I feel like if you, I guess you got a little bit of that with Bill trying to save the kid at the the fair, but other than that, uh, Pennywise is like pretty absent from like part of the movie. So yeah, which just thinking about like the movie and what all happened, it, it is kind of surprising that it is three, almost three hours. Yeah, because they, they they get to Derry pretty quickly. Right, and then the rest of the movie is pretty much just them finding the artifacts. Yeah, and yeah. then the final showdown with Pennywise. So it is kind of strange that it did last so long. And that's another thing that this movie did that, like I, like I said, I can't remember if they did it in the book or not because like I haven't really read it. I've only looked into it. Um, is that in the first one, the biggest strength that movie had for it, there's two huge strengths that movie had for it that almost made it pretty, it, as long as it did everything right, it was destined to be a success. That is number one, it was kids. Mm -hmm. And number two, they were together throughout the entire movie. Yeah. And that really helped that movie out. This movie, like I said, it didn't have a possibility of being as good as the first one. Number one, they are adults. And number two, I guess it could have written a little better for this one, is they were split up throughout the entire thing. And that really was a huge issue. Which I enjoyed, I enjoyed the scenes that they had. I just wouldn't enjoy it more if they were together. Right. You know? Yeah. Because I, I think the stuff with them together was like probably some of my favorite parts. Because like you could, you, just like the kids felt like a believable like group of kids, this felt very much like a group of a, like former friends who like still knew each other really well, but also hadn't seen each other in a long period of time. Yeah. And so you got some of like the back and forth, especially between Eddie and Richie, was really like fun. Um, and then the relationship between like Ben and Barefield Lee, I thought was really well handled yeah. as well. Another thing that was kind of weird was the fact that Pennywise knew they were here into there the entire movie. Mm -hmm. And in the first one, the only reason why they lived was because they were together. Right? Yeah. And they continuously said that. Yeah. In this movie, they're all apart, and then each person sees Pennywise in some form. Yeah. It seems like it'd be a lot easier to kill. Them. Right. Yeah. I, I will say, because I've been talking about negatives in this movie a lot, but, which I will say I did like this movie a decent amount. And one thing I did really like was whenever they did have a scary moment, it was still pretty scary. Yeah. This movie was a slower paced movie than the first one. There wasn't as many scares uh, per minute or, or whatever, however you want to call it. But uh, whenever there was a scare, it was pretty scary in my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, I did find this movie not nearly as scary as the first one. Yeah. It wasn't nearly as creepy, you know? But overall, I felt like the movie was decently well written enough, mm -hmm. you know, for me to enjoy it. I also felt like it wasn't as clean as a movie. Some of the scenes were kind of put together in right. a strange yeah. manner. You know, the editing could have been a little better. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. But overall, like the writing was enjoyable enough for me to enjoy this movie, like to its, to its extent. And like I honestly would watch this movie again. It doesn't have as nearly as good of a rewatch value as the first one for several reasons. Number one, the first one's a lot shorter. Yeah. And number two, the first one's a lot faster paced. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just easier to watch and realize you're watching like, oh, it's almost, almost it's almost over, you know? Right, yeah. This one right here, <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, this one too. But uh, and, and and this one, I didn't know. I didn't necessarily feel the whole the whole time of the three hours. I did feel it a tad bit, um, but uh, overall, like I just feel like it, it. It did fly by a little bit, but not nearly as much as this first one. I felt like a lot of this movie could have been cut out. Yeah, you know? I feel like in terms of like rewatching it, I would only rewatch this one if I was like rewatching both of them together. This one, I, I would really only want to see it as like the continue, like as the conclusion to the first one story. Because it's like as a conclusion to the story, I think it, like especially like the last like ten minutes or so, is a really good wrap up to everything. But like you said, I was uh, like it just wasn't as scary, and I feel like. I feel like this one overused CGI a lot. Oh more. yeah, a lot. Because like lot. the first one, there was definitely a lot of CGI, but it felt like more incorporated with some of the like uh, regular stuff, and it felt like a little bit more creepy because they weren't showing as much. This one, the CGI was a lot more over the top. Yeah, because there's a lot more bigger things. Yeah, a lot more larger things. I just didn't think the imagery was just as creepy as it was in the first yeah. one. Yeah, I will say I love the end of this movie though. Yeah, the end of this movie is done extremely well. Yeah, it was done a lot better because uh, a lot of people have a problem with the end of the for the book. They have a lot of people. A lot of people have a problem with the the last half of this movie, uh, especially with the end and Pennywise's form at the end. Um, they really did well with that with Penny, Pennywise's form. It wasn't nearly as boring as I, as I thought it was going to be. Well guys, overall, I felt like this movie was really, I actually really liked this movie quite a bit. I had a lot of issues with it, I had a lot of pacing issues. The CGI was a little bad. Um, and I really felt like they could have just cut out a decent amount of this movie to just make it more concise. Uh, but overall, I would recommend this movie. Uh, I don't want to promise that you're going to like this movie if you've, seen, if you've seen the first one for a lot of reasons. I'm going to say It Chapter 2 is 75% awesome. Yeah, overall, this I was actually pretty uh, disappointed by this movie compared to the first one. I felt like the first one was just a lot tighter. The writing was a lot better. The writing in this one was good, but I just think the directing wasn't as good. It wasn't as scary. Um, it, the CGI was overused, and I didn't really uh, think that... I th felt like the flashbacks were overused as well. Uh, but the acting is really good, and I think that it is a satisfying conclusion to just the it movies in general. So I'm going to say that It Chapter 2 is 62% awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to say I didn't like this movie, but it, de it definitely wasn't as great as, a, as I was hoping, especially with how much I love the first one. I just felt like it they could have cut it down a lot more, made it a little bit of a shorter and more uh, concise movie uh, like the first one was. Um, it was a little too slow paced. Uh, I did feel like they retread a lot of the same grounds as the first one did. Uh, at some parts, and the uh, de aging t kind of took me out of the, some of the best scenes that I feel like would have been some of my favorite. I'm gonna say that It Chapter 2 is 65% awesome. Well, guys, before we close this thing out, I wanna go ahead and uh, let Liam talk about himself, you know, just a yeah. little bit. That's a weird way of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks again for having me on. This is always super fun. Um, I have a blog, liammgawhan.wordpress.com. I do written movie reviews, been doing for it for about six years or so. It, doing it. <laughs> I didn't even, I wasn't even intended. Uh, but if you wanna check out my reviews there, that's where they are. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description below for that. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tell us what you thought about it, it Chapter 2, whether or not you liked this one or the first one more, and just tell me all the things you liked about it or didn't like about it. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at 2 awesome Men. Also, I always forget to bring this up. Uh, we have a podcast called The Awesome Drum Podcast, so you can look in the description, description below <laughs> for the link to that. Anyways, guys, uh, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.